On the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is a man who has clearly seen this rivalry from both sides, has played for both of these university football programs, finished at BYU, the last man to lead BYU to a postseason ranking at number 25 in 2011 and a 10-win season. His name is Riley Nelson. Riley, welcome back to the program. Good to be with you, fellas. You grew up in Cache Valley. As I mentioned, played at both Utah State and BYU. What does this rivalry game, the battle for the old wagon wheel, mean to you? It means a lot. And I think um, going down and experiencing it from BYU, it's it's interesting. There's kind of a, especially recently, there's a false bravado among BYU fans that the rivalry doesn't mean much. But when we're looking at being pretty much 500 with them in the next decade. If, if, uh, you know, BYU doesn't win tonight, um, that's a rivalry if I've ever seen one, but it, it's a big time game. It's a big time game for Aggies. It's a big time game for the players in the program at BYU, even though fans may not readily admit it. So to me, it's the, it's my favorite game of the year. It's always on this Friday before conference. And uh, it's, you know, in the last, in the last few matchups has kind of been back and forth and been a great game to be at. Yeah, if uh, if a win streak against a team defines a rivalry, then BYU and Utah aren't rivals. So let's not say that that's the defining thing, right? It, it, there's a lot that goes into it. But I've enjoyed this game more the last couple of years because it's been close. So let's talk about the personal side of this. Not only did you play on both sides, but you have two brothers that are on the Utah State team right now in Chase, a safety, and DJ, a wide receiver, and a holder. So emotionally, what's this like for you? Well, I obviously, you know, cheer for their success. And, and above all, I know this seems hard to believe having played for both teams, but I just want a good game. Like, for example, last year with Bo being hurt and, be, you know, all the turnovers, that that wasn't satisfying for anyone. I mean, even my brothers on Utah State said, we didn't want to win like that. We want each team to be at their best and then to compete and then have it to come, uh, you know, have it to come down to the end. So, I was fortunate enough to participate in a game like that, and that's what I hope for every game in this rivalry in or out. And, and honestly, I kind of enjoy the good favor of being happy no matter who wins. What are your conversations like with your brothers this week? Well, I just, I'm always interested in what they're thinking about running and, and where they think they can exploit BYU's defense, uh, where BYU's defense you know, uh, or sorry, where what USU's defense trying to do to to try and beef up and play against the the O line that's been the strength for BYU and stop that running game, which I think is the key to BYU's success tonight is establishing that run and uh, and sustaining drives. And so it's most of it has to do with trying to get any kind of inside information I can on the plays. Now I'm not going to share that with you guys on the airwaves because then I would be cut off forever. But um, <laughs> that's what our conversations have have centered around. We'll just text later. Don't worry. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Right. We're, we're, this is game six, Riley, for BYU. So we're, we're getting a real sense of what BYU is or isn't, right? Yet BYU's played four Power 5 teams, three on the road. It's hard to know, right? Then there's Utah State. Uh, really tough game with Michigan State. Probably should have won that game. Two, two cupcakes in Tennessee Tech, New Mexico State, a bunch of points. And then a nice win against Air Force. So what do you think of Utah State? The offense is good. It's just a question of how good, right? It's true, and it's a question of – obviously Michigan State was bigger than them, but in week one, nobody really knows who they are. And if you are a team that's maybe outmatched, I think Utah State's biggest issue will be size. They're going to need to find out can they play against a team with size, which up front BYU has the definite size and physicality advantage. So can BYU match that intensity over – or I'm sorry, can USU match that intensity and physicality over – four quarters to me that's the biggest question that utah state will be able to answer their high tempo offense uh the speed that they have in their running backs and uh the ability to consistently sustain drives in the short to intermediate passing game i think has been proven what utah state has less to or has yet to prove is how they match up against a big physical team like BYU and like they will face throughout the season in Boise State and others. Riley Nelson, former BYU quarterback with us on BYU Sports Nation. I know you said that you want a good, competitive, close game. Maybe there's another epic finish tonight. I don't think anybody would complain about that. But what kind of game do you expect from Utah State and BYU tonight? I'm so excited because I don't know what will happen 
because when you because going into this matchup, both teams have such different styles. BYU is going to try and turn this thing into a center of the ring prize fight, just exchanging haymakers uh, with power runs and stout defense. And Utah State is going to try and turn this into a track meet. So, uh, I mean, it's good. Both teams are going to be at the utmost of execution. If if BYU can't, you know, if they have a couple three and outs or if they turn the ball over and give Utah State's tempo offense extra possessions, they could be up 14, 17, 21 points in the blink of an eye. At the same time, if BYU can sustain drives, keep the way, keep the ball away from Utah State and limit, you know, these tempo offenses bank on getting 12, somewhere between 12 and 15 offensive possessions because their average drives only last two to three minutes. If BYU can limit those possessions to where Utah State in this Temple offense only gets seven or eight possessions, that puts so much pressure on them to make sure they score touchdowns on probably what I see half of them. So it's really going to be the first one to flinch um, is going to give the other one the advantage. And then that, that kind of setting the tone in the first half, and then who's going to be able to make adjustments and respond in the second half. So I think this game is as intriguing to me as it has been in years because the styles are so markedly different. And I think it's going to make for a great matchup. Do you think that Utah State would be wise to make Tanner Mangum pass the ball? Because we've seen Tanner be a tremendous passer in a different offense. But in this offense, uh, Tanner Mangum hasn't had success in the intermediate to uh, deep throws. What do you think? I think most definitely. I think um, Utah, or sorry, BYU's offensive line has proven to be their best unit uh, or best, you know, because the five guys play as one, maybe their best player on offense. So if you look at the Patriots model and a lot of other successful football programs, they're, what they try and do is eliminate their best player. So if I'm Utah State, I pack the box and I make Tanner make play. I Well, a couple of things. One, I make the offensive staff and coordinator draw plays to allow Tanner to have success on the edge because if you were to study – their five games worth of game film, that has there has not been hardly any of that going on. The mostly the mostly what they've done on the edge, one has been trying to get to the edge via fly sweeps, but as far as throwing out to your X and Z receivers, it's been a lot of stop routes. Um, it's been a lot of curls. Nothing that really forces you to soften up the box and play kind of a soft zone on the outside with the passing game being a real threat. So I pack the box. I keep edge contained so that they don't beat me with the fly sweep or soften me up with the fly sweep. And I make Tanner have to distribute the ball to the edge and force them to get chunk plays down the field on the edge, which they've only had one or two over the course of the whole season. So long story short, most definitely you pack the box, you do your best to take away BYU's run and force, you know, Tanner and Grimes and those outside wide receivers to beat you. Riley, fantastic to catch up with you. We look forward to uh, having you on Countdown to Kickoff as well tonight, yeah. uh, live on BYU TV, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain of Time. Thanks for the time, man. Thanks, fellas. Can't wait. Riley Nelson on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.